Hello, iOS developers. This is John Mead coming to you from sunny San Francisco, California. So today I want to tell you about uh, the basic use of exception breakpoints. Uh, this is uh, a feature of Xcode that is for some reason a little bit hard to find. Anyway, to, to show you a little bit about catching exceptions, we really have to create an exception which fortunately for me I'm very good at. So here we'll just uh, go into Xcode, make a new project. We're, we're just gonna do a iOS application, a single view application. Call it what you want. You can use storyboards, automatic reference counting, all that good stuff. And let's just jump right into it. So opening up the app delegate, we'll see there's a whole bunch of junk in here that's auto-generated that we don't care about. Really, we just want to get to this uh, did finish launching with options method, which is really our launching off point that, and it's the only thing we care about. So we're going to write a method here that's going to crash. Um, we'll call self crash me. And then we will go and implement crash me and we'll do something really bad inside of that method. So this is going to be a avoid method, no return value. It's going to be called crash me. And in here, we're going to take advantage of some of the loose typing, late binding, introspection characteristics of Objective C that makes it extremely easy to crash. So here we're going to call uh, a selector that uh, doesn't exist. So uh, perform selector does not exist. So what's going to happen here? We're going to get, we're going to call this method. It's going to call a, a selector that does not exist and hopefully we're going to have a huge crash and not know what the heck is going on. So let's run this guy in the iPhone simulator and see if we were successful in blowing up. And indeed we have. So here we are crashed inside of the main method of our app. If you look around, we have a bunch of, we're, we're inside of the debug navigator broken on uh, this line 14 of the main method and the first thread, none of this is really going to give us any good information as to what's going on. We're just kind of stuck with this uh, output information, which again is not going to mention anything about any specific uh, file here, or it's not going to point us to any uh, place in the code where we can go and, and set a breakpoint and really see what's going on here. So we're kind of stuck. What can we do? Well, way over here, if we go up to the breakpoints window, in this context-sensitive tiny little thing in the lower left-hand corner, we have a plus sign. And if you're smart enough to read the documentation or have a friend who knows how to point this kind of stuff out to you, you can click here and add an exception breakpoint. So what that's going to do is it's going to break every time that we have an exception. Well, we did just break when we had an exception but this is hopefully going to break a lot sooner and possibly point us to the place in the implementation file that we're actually having a problem. So uh, we're going to set an, ex uh, an exception breakpoint. Uh, all we care about is Objective C because that's all we're writing. We're going to break what it throws, and there's a whole lot more stuff that we can do in here. We're just not going to we're just not going to get into any of that sort of stuff. So uh, all we're going to do is break on throw. So we just hit done, and now here's your uh, here's your breakpoint up here. Let's run this again and see where it breaks this time. Boom! So there we go. So in our method, it's going to give us some information up here. Uh, it says unrecognized selector sent to an instance. So the only instance we have here is called self. We're broken right here. The only selector that we're calling is this one that does not exist. So obviously this is the this is the thing that's going wrong. So setting your exception breakpoints is exceptionally easy. Remember, just down here in the lower left-hand corner, add exception breakpoint, and there you go.